tours. Also wanted to tell you a little bit about 30 Minutes or Less, which Nick and I both saw. And uh, we'll have a review, tag team review up by the time this posts. And uh, I think we were both a little disappointed, not to any great degree. It's uh, ultimately a, a funny film, but uh, it's filled with great people like uh, Ziz Ansari and Jesse Eisenberg, Nick Swardson, uh, Danny McBride, all of which who have their stick that is, you know, some are more hit and miss than others, some are more tired than others by this point. Um, it's from the director Ruben Fleischer, who did Zombieland, and uh, I think it's definitely uh, a step down from that first very confident, good horror comedy. This is more of an action comedy trying to be in the style of something like Midnight Run or, or a 70s action flick, and it, it doesn't really quite pull any of that off. Um, it's charming, it's good natured, there's nothing offensively stupid about it. Um, it's not, it, it doesn't completely flat, flat line, it just feels thin and half-baked and just a little listless. Uh, it, it's it's kind of hard to pinpoint exactly what went wrong because it's just everything is just sort of generally flat, um, which is a bummer, uh, but hopefully we'll see better from Ruben Fleischer, Ruben Fleischer in the future. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that none of the cast is going to be affected. This, this shouldn't be a loss for anyone. Ruben's already moving on to Gangster Squad, which seems like a really interesting cast and great piece of material, so hopefully we'll see a big improvement there. Uh, so, yeah, that's 30 minutes or less. I visited the set last year. You can check out the set visit report from that. And, again, our review will be up by the time this, you're watching this. When you enter a dark room and turn on the lights, that thing that scurries under the counter is the Final Destination series. It's like this bizarre little roach of a franchise that somehow perseveres. And this week, there's a new one coming out. But I must say, um, the fact that this series continues and it's theatrical, it defies just about it, all the logic of, of horror. I mean, it's not like the Saw films, which have a built-in audience which have a built-in audience and, and a fan base. A fucked up fan base. What a bunch of assholes they are. If you're one of the soft fans, you need to die. You need to just fuck yourself off in a strange tradition. Some sort of a bizarre ritual that ends everything about you but does not a really sort of clever way that upon repeat viewing really isn't that interesting at all. But the Final Destination movies they don't even have that visceral pleasure that the second and first one had. It's just a fucking nightmare. And I'm so happy. I'm so happy that it's out there. Because every time we get a Final Destination movie, it means that there's something even better coming out the following weekend. Hey, Chewers. Uh, I am coming to you today from my walk across the street to get some lunch. And I thought I'd tell you a little bit about a movie I saw last night called Final Destination 5. Uh, now, I'm not super ultra familiar with uh, the Final Destination series. I've seen a couple of them. I uh, don't follow them. Uh, but it's known, I think, for being a relatively harmless horror franchise with a few good gags. But ultimately, the kind of thing that can be reduced to a few minutes of a YouTube video, which uh, has been happening, as uh, I think every kill of the entire franchise has been spread around uh, across a video this week leading up to the film. And uh, the fifth is no exception. It, it fits right in with that. And uh, it's filled with the same kind of gimmicky kills in 3D. Uh, minimal story, minimal interesting relationships. Uh, a little bit of decent comedy from David Kechner. Kechner? Kechner? Koechner? Cockner? Whatever the fuck his last name is. But uh, yeah, it's not particularly amazing. There are the bridge sequence. In true Final Destination style, the opening sequence of Death and Mayhem is pretty cool. Uh, and they, of course, have their gimmick that allows them to kind of do it twice, which is fun, but ultimately harmless. And it's, I don't know, it's kind of hard to, to say it justifies the cost of a ticket when, again, in six months, it'll be represented by 45 seconds of a YouTube clip. Uh, so I don't know. As for its place in the franchise, it might be the best, I suppose. But this is not a Fast and the Furious type thing where, you know, the fifth is a surprisingly good movie. It remains one of those franchises that's kind of still bafflingly in theaters. So, uh, yeah, if you, if you need something 
some kind of diversion in the theaters, a little bit of 3D Gru, then go for it. The 3D is nice. They use it well. They toss a lot of gags in. So you could have some fun with it, but uh, it's not essential by any means. All right, I'm gonna eat now. Can you believe Planet of the Apes did $54 million?